Travelling in a classic car is a huge adventure. Who knows if it's going to make it? They need constant care and attention, especially when you're off the beaten track or parked in a metre of water. How do you get back on the road again? We've asked Land Rover Guru Rob to shine a light on the subject and help us understand the technical side of maintenance and repair. Is this a problem, this curly stuff? Is this a problem, this curly stuff? <laughs> Um, there you go. Now what we can see on this one, by the way, mm -hmm. this is the uh, bearing race. So if we get one of our bearings again. What is it you? Okay. Yeah, we can use that one. Okay. The bearing, because it's a, a taper roller bearing, has to sit in a race. Okay. And that sits like that. And on the one that we have there, mm -hmm. say top and bottom, you can see here that the race is pressed into okay. the swivel. So here you would only use the inside bit. That bit. Yep. But we're going to put a new ball on. Yeah. So we have to put that yes. into here. So if we were going to use this one again. Yeah, but you have to, because it's a set with the bearings, you yeah. have to, you would have to take that one out. If we were going to reuse it, okay. we'd have to take that one out yeah. and put a new one in because these are matched okay. to the bearing. Okay. And you get wear on here so as well as wear on there. So you can't reuse that by itself. No. Okay. okay. I'm hoping. <laughs> we're going to film this. Jesus. So we started off, and then, theoretically, so we still need to go a little bit, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but down here there's still a, just a little bit of a gap, you see, yeah, so, a little bit more. Change when it hits. And now it looks to me flush all the way around. Cool. Yeah. Well, make sure you get it in level, yeah. and then a, a good tap to start with. With the big one. You can use the big one, but make sure that say you've got to hold it. And yeah. Without the fingers. <laughs> Man. <laughs> How do you stop it from popping out? You keep it pressed in with your fingers. You'll notice if you, if you hit your fingers, by the way, the sound is different. Yes. It's followed by a... Ah! <laughs> ah, man, this is ridiculous. This is not funny. <laughs> Could be here a while. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Should we put the kettle on, get some tea. Put the kettle on, guys. <laughs> Have a brew. I'm running out of this space. <clears throat> You're so funny. Everyone's a comedian. I was going to say, and in part three, <laughs> <laughs> we will show you. <laughs> this is the part where they break for commercials. <laughs> straight. Okay. Would you hear a knocking at all? Would it be alright? Yeah. Yeah. Better. And aim for there. Okay. So so imagine that you're trying to hit it at that point, okay. not at this point. And you go through it. Mm -hmm. Turn it open, hold it no. That's pretty good here. Yeah, a bit more. 
No, not too. There you go. Yeah. So the important thing is to get it completely level, yeah. and as I say, when you hit it, you no, you aim for the good. bottom rather yeah. than the top, and that yeah, puts the power that way. Force yeah. Down. Yeah. Put the bearing okay. brace in for the top and the bottom. Okay. And on the back of the swivel, mm -hmm. there is an oil seal. Now, okay. when the constant velocity joint came out, 1970, on the, on the first Range Rovers, um, then the constant velocity joints were lubricated with grease. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so, and it's a, a grey, you'll see it later on, but it's a grey, thick grease. Uh, and what you then have is your swivel housing filled with grease for the constant velocity joint, and on this side of the axle, you have a liquid yeah. oil. So you don't want transference of the oil and the grease. Okay. Um, and when you um, when you check the oil in the in the, the differential uh, on on the Land Rovers, uh, quite often you see that the oil has gone from being that nice yellow clear colour mm -hmm. to a sort of grey liquid, mm -hmm. and that's because that seal. Okay. Okay, which is here, that seal is no longer working. So the grease is transferring that way and the oil is transferring that way. So they're mixing. Okay, and they're mixing. And also... So, so this oil should stay clear on this side? So the oil on this side should stay clear okay. and your EP00 grease, this side, should stay there. Okay? So, so that's the purpose of this oil seal. Okay. Um, there's two sides to it. You've got this part, Okay. Normally you would think, with an oil seal, that it would go in that way. Okay? Mm. That's kind of what you logically think. Okay? But in actual fact, it goes in the other way. And the lip is designed, this is the, the lip, and the shaft is going to come through this side, yeah, so not that side. Seal. So it forms a seal, and it forms a seal on this oh, part right. here. Yeah? So this shiny bit is So this shiny bit is where it was on, rubbing on the okay. seal there. Yeah? Okay. So what we do, we put the seal on here. Mm -hmm. right. Try and place Level. it as flat as possible. Okay. And then, there, we have a rubber mallet. Because it's a rubber seal. And it's the same action yeah. as you did. Okay. Ah, you hold it. Why is it shaking? <laughs> That's just a bit of. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the caracas. Because it's a Mexican <laughs> rubber mallet. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. That's Keep going. You need to be flush with the back of the. <laughs> Move it here, just this part. There you go. That should be it. Okay, that's it. Okay. So. I like what it is. It's, it's something that a lot of people do forget, and it's one of those, duh, I don't believe I can do that moment. But the seal sits on here, yeah. and the retaining ring sits on the back. Okay. Okay. And now you've got the axle going that way. Mm -hmm. okay. So a lot of people get really excited, they fit this, yes. and you will notice <laughs> that that doesn't fit anymore. So always remember to put the seal and the retaining ring on first. Okay. Before. Okay. Yeah. Now that was getting in so, the way when I was going to take the bolt yeah. off. So I remember that. The other thing, and we'll just check it because if you can pass me the housing. Okay. okay. Right. I'll show you. Okay. So, so this is the bottom pin. Mm -hmm. And we've got the top pin up there, and the seal just sits in there, like that. And it cool. fits. Okay, and it fits, which is always a good sign. So, and the ring goes on. 
Now the question is, it will only go on one way. Okay. So you can see I've got two of the holes lined up here, but these ones don't. Okay. And it's not that one. And it's not that one. Though that's close. And so forth. There we go. Not no. there. Looks no. No, not there. <laughs> no. Okay. We're well, back to there. Yeah. Well, this is what I was going to demonstrate. Because you actual fact, around. you turn it over. Let me put it. There. All right. Hey, and that fits. Yeah. Okay. Actually, if you look, you see you've got a cutout here and a cutout here, oh, right. which match with yeah, these good. two. Okay. All right. That's where it goes. But the thing that you also have is that a lot of people, when they come to do the job, <laughs> they put the seal on, there, they just put the ring on because they haven't checked, and then when you come to do this one, it doesn't fit anymore, you've got to take it all off again. So make sure that you put it on the way that it's going to go before, okay. yeah? Okay. Right so we know way. that here. you have two grooves there and there. Yeah, so that one lines up, that one lines up. They all line up. Okay. This is going to be here. So that has to go that way on. Yeah. Now between the between the swivel and the axle. There is also a paper gasket. Bolt and use the one at the top. Yeah. Okay. All right. The other top. <laughs> well, no, this is the top. Yeah, that's the top. Where's this one? <laughs> that's right. Just to see if you're paying attention, that's all. So. Yeah, okay. Then you can suspend it. Yeah, you can suspend it and make sure that the gasket fits nicely. Yeah. So, it goes in the right place. So all the uh, all the bolts are in now in finger tight, mm -hmm. and the gasket is sitting nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What you're going to do now mm -hmm. is if you start at the top, mm -hmm. and then the bottom, okay. and then opposites. Opposites. Okay. So you can wind them on, okay? Okay. And then we'll go to the, the final bit of tightening. They're secured. Secure. Okay. And and the if you read the book, then you have to torque each of the, the bolts to 65 to 80 newton meters. Little problem that we have is that you can't get a normal torque wrench onto the bolts. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, okay. Not strictly speaking by the book, but what we do, we make sure that they are good and tight. How do you tighten these? I was told not to tighten them too much. Ah, okay. okay. That's right. We'll just give them a tickle first. So, get it there. Use special tool number one. Mm. You just keep that out of the way a sec. And it's about that, okay. okay? All right. So not exactly scientific, but in all the years that I've been doing it, mm -hmm. it works. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're not beating it to death, you're just tightening it. This one's moving more than the other way. Is that yeah. right? Well, yeah, well, that's okay. I'll do. Where the oil seal goes. Yeah, a little bit of oil on. 
okay all right then you're going to put this one on here mm -hmm. we're going to put a little bit of oil on there okay and then you're going to lift him in okay, over. like when you took it off yeah lift him over okay we're well, then but i'm going to put... make sure that this lines up for the bottom yeah, yeah. yeah. okay then we're going to put this into so we'll put the pin once it's on and he will go into there through here okay at the top yeah so at the top uh, yeah okay okay so so now the two pins with the bearings are now pivoting round on the swivel itself okay and we're going to put the two bolts from here mm -hmm. came out we're going to put them in and then we have to measure how much force it takes to move him from there to there. Okay. And that's what we're going to use and the if, scale for. And that's what we use the spring balance for. <laughs> fish scale. And the fish scale, yeah. <laughs> so, if the resistance is too high, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. then you need to add shims. Okay. And if the resistance is too low, you need to take shims away. Okay. Because okay. that basically right. moves this further in okay. to provide resistance here or further out. So that's what we need. A little bit of oil onto the bearing. A little bit of lubrication. Okay. We do the same with the bottom one. So. If we had an oil can, it'd be easier, but okay. Right. So you can I'll move the oil can out of the way. <laughs> Okay, oh, now, there you go. That looks easy. Okay. Okay. This comes on the top. That goes on the top. <clears throat> and it has to go straight into the bearing and into the... So you might have to do a little bit of wiggle wiggle. Let's go you down. need to move this yeah, at the same time that ah. you're moving that. Aha. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Cool. Now we're yeah. going to bolt it down. So, and if you've got the bolts for winding these ones on, this should lift up. This should sit down there. So, we have to check the preload. Okay. Now, the, <coughs> the bracket for the brake pipe, jump hose, needs to be on here. Okay. But then you've got the caliper off and the bracket on and so forth. So what we do is we take two washers, the same thickness as the plate, mm. okay? We put those on instead. And that saves you having to do that. But it is important that you have washers of the same thickness as the plate because you've changed the preload, okay? So put him in, put him in. That's equivalent to quite a couple of shins. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's equivalent to quite a couple of shins. So. So now, lift it up, make sure the pin is in, screw that onto there, screw that one onto there, and then we have to tighten it up. So we're going to go to seven, say 70 newton meters, okay, which this one's marked in meters kilogram, which is seven is there, okay. If you want that in pounds foot, there's this piece of paper. Okay. Then it's 44 to 52. So there's 40, there's 45, it's 52. So just on round about the 50 pounds foot. Okay. So keeping that out of the way. Tighten the two bolts down. We tighten them evenly. When you start to feel a bit of resistance, mm -hmm. then you start looking at the pointer. Now, you probably will be able to see the pointer moving. You see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. And what we're aiming for is it to be okay. roundabout. 
there. Okay. Yeah, it's clearer. You want to do the other one? Yeah. Okay, seven. So, so you're looking for that pointer to be on the seven. Piper, I tell you, I need glasses. <laughs> Could borrow mine. We can go back again. You just take it. It's almost there. And right. <laughs> Shake it. <laughs> the pressure. Not that exciting, to be honest. <laughs> So now it's tight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how is it? Okay. We feel a bit of right? a bit of resistance. Okay. So what we have to do now, again, without the seal or the uh, ring in place, mm -hmm. keep them out of the way. If we get a tie wrap, that's there. Hold it. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do to spring balance. Yeah. So, as this we're going to attach to mm -hmm. the tie wrap, mm -hmm. and as I pull, or as you pull, mm -hmm. then we need for it to be about there. Somewhere it's between eight and ten pounds, or coming up to four kilograms. Okay. And that's the force to m required to move that. Okay. So you go there, yeah. and then you pull, yeah. and you pull it in a clean movement. Okay, Come. it's already gone past four. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's it now, because now you stopped. Yeah. We go back. Yeah. All right. So it's just a single movement, yeah. and we're watching, yeah, we're watching for that to be around about four mm -hmm. as you're pulling. Yeah. That's already more. That's already more. Yeah. So it's, okay. So, so it's too once, loose. No, it's too tight. Too tight. So once more with feeling, shall we? Okay. Just check, yeah? So we go, okay, mm. right. So it was about five, okay? okay. Do it a little bit slower, but okay. you can see, yeah? Okay, uh, and it's okay. five and a bit that you can okay. see. So you see we've added a shim, because before the preload was too stiff. So we've taken the um, pin out, added another shim in, and now, and this is trial and error, but as you pull, we're now at about the four on a constant pull. That's kilograms. Yeah. yeah. So there you oh, go. Cool. So we know <laughs> now the number of shim shims that we got in there. We know that it's okay. And so now it, we can build it back up again. That's really Each cool. side will be different. Each side is different. Yeah. So you have to test yeah. it. Yeah. So you have to test it. Okay. In actual fact, I mean. Okay, we use the spring balance here, but you can just naturally you can feel that there is a bit of resistance there, so you're not having to struggle mm. to turn it, but it's not wobbly either. So if you just feel it yourself, you kind of no, get it's very smooth. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a yeah. smooth feeling. Yeah. yeah, but it's not loose. Yes, you can feel a resistance. But you're not having to put effort in yeah. to turn it. And that's basically what you're going for. The swivel extension. Okay. Now you put the seal back in. Yeah. And place the retaining ring on. The retaining ring's got those hooky things. With the technical terms. Okay. So if you put the seal in first, make yeah. sure that it's flush against the housing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, and then it doesn't put the, stay there by itself. No, it doesn't stay there by itself. Okay. So then you have to use that. And here's to use the, the one, retaining ring. And this is the other one here. Yeah. So these are the two. So it should now line up nicely to there and there. Yeah. It seems like they should fit. Line up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'll hold that. Okay. If you put one in one side and one in the other side. Yeah. 
And these are these are tightened to evenly to seven to ten newton meters, which is basically hand tight. Mm. Yeah, that feels bad, right? Feels bad, right? Yeah. We've got to go back the same way. Done. Yeah, that has to go in. Okay. And it has to locate into the differential at the other end. Okay. How do you know when it's there? Uh, when, when it's not in. in. <laughs> so this goes completely in, huh? It goes in. Do you turn it at all? A clue would be <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you need to move the shaft up a bit because at the moment, yeah. as you've gone through you've got the tube. Yeah. And the shaft is currently sitting like that. Okay. So, so you need to lift the shaft up. Yeah. Okay. And then turn it so it goes in. Oh, let's see. Yeah, but if you turn the turn the shaft. It doesn't matter which way. Is it in gear? No. Yeah. It is in gear. Oh. Sorry. It's turning? Yes. Okay. It's engaged. <laughs> there you go. Cool. So yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it's got this seal in place. This is all very even here. Yeah? Keyway is at the, top, is at the 12 top position. So this is at the top? Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Right. And make sure, whoops. What do I mean? Yeah. Make sure what? We make sure that the that stub axle, the now, that the stub axle, right, at the back there is a, a, a bronze bush, mm -hmm. okay, and the end of the uh, CV joint mm -hmm. should be in the bush. Okay, and how do we fill it from here? Because you hold that and you pull this mm -hmm. this way. It doesn't go any further. No. That's that, that. So it is engaged. Okay. okay. Because if it came out, then it wouldn't be engaged. Well, what happens is that that if it's not in the right place, yeah. as you tighten these bolts in, mm -hmm. you will damage the bush at the back. Okay. Okay. I think I've got it. <laughs> I can show you again if you yes, want. Yes. Alright, here we go. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's the right place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've got a bronze bush here. Yes. Okay. Alright. This sits up against here. Okay. Okay. Alright. If this is not if this is too far out, yeah. okay, from the axle. Yeah. Okay doesn't go in correctly as you wind the flange mm -hmm. onto the housing this will catch on the edge of this and you will okay. damage it okay okay so what you do so you put them on make sure that's at the 12 o'clock position mm -hmm. okay and then okay. pull it, pull it out, out as you push, as you push it in and the end of the splines mm -hmm. on here should be flush with the end of the stub axle. I'm going to tighten one of the top ones, one of the bottom ones, one of the top ones, one of the bottom ones, left, right. Yeah? Okay. And you need the extension on. And you're going to be turning it clockwise. That's 50 there. Okay. Okay. So. I need my glasses. <laughs> so we're just on the 50 there. 
or 65 newton meters. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. If you push down on it, yeah. and when you go in for the 50. Okay. Right. Shaking. Okay, that's about 50, yeah? Cool. Yeah? Okay. And then next one. Go that one there, yeah. So, we can put the, the, the swivel grease into yeah. the housing now. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. We'll do that first. Okay. And we'll also refit, refit the track rod end and the ball joint. Track rod. Track rod end. Oh, that, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, we'll fit that yes. now yes. while we've got the space. Good idea. Okay, and then we'll do the brake piece. Okay. So this is the fill plug. <laughs> so, Hello. In the <clears throat> all right. In the early days, going back to what I was saying before, the swivel housing was filled with oil. Yes. Okay, and. Later on, Land Rover changed when they had the constant velocity joints. They changed over to filling it with EP00 pseudo housing mm -hmm. piece. Okay. There was a transitional period, however, where they used oil in the swivel, the swivel housings with the constant velocity joints. So the earlier types of housing have a little drain plug down here that you used to undo mm -hmm. and the oil would come out. Okay. Then you put the plug back change. in and you do an yeah. oil change. Okay. But now that's kind of redundant because you use grease. Okay. okay. So, and it's one of the most highly contested um, things in the Land Rover world as to whether you use grease or, or oil. oil. Okay. But with a constant velocity joint, you use grease. Okay. Okay. So, so you get a sachet of small housing grease and it's sometimes referred to as one shot grease. That's because in bag, this is one shot, and it all goes in. Cool. Yeah? So you can undo stuff. that. Okay. And there's a nozzle here. So, give you a nice little nozzle. Well, what they don't give you is a package that you can open. <laughs> Do you need it or can you put it straight in? You can put it straight in, but it doesn't make any difference. That's maybe easier. We're going to find out in about three seconds <laughs> that it either leaks out or it And it's, uh, it's a grey sort of um, lithium-based grease, basically. So it's thicker than oil, but thinner than bearing grease. Oh, cool. And yeah. also, you need to have the swivel pointing this way when you're filling. If you have it pointing that way, you will be up against the ball and it will immediately all come out. Why? Because you're going to be squirting it on directly onto the ball, oh, okay. whereas here you're squirting it into the gap in the middle. No idea where it's going to. Well, it's not coming out the bottom, Victoria, so you got the job correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah? That's that done. Okay. Okay, nice and tidy. Yeah. You just have a little look. I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, it's a stunning coat. There you go. So. As I say, it's not, it's not as thick as bearing grease, but it's not as thin as oil, so it's yeah. kind of sort of halfway between the two. Yeah. Does it get thicker? Because the stuff that drips out looks a lot thicker. Than ah, but that's been contaminated with the B90 and it's old and so forth. Okay. So, no. Every time that you do a service, what you should do is take that off, you get a tie wrap, put a tie wrap into the hole in that direction, Oh, and the level should be about halfway on the tire rack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, what you're looking is that half of that swivel housing and ball are full of grease. All right. Okay. That's that's what you should do. And and as I say, if it's 
one one sachet does a whole swivel housing from start to finish. Now, when you've replaced it, look how shiny and beautiful. No pitting, no grease, no baby. It doesn't match anymore. <laughs> no. Why does it have these funny grooves in it? it? Looks like a crown. Because that's where the split bin goes through. Right, to keep it in place. Keep it in place. Yeah, you, know, you need to tighten it before you put the split bin in. Though. Okay. Too tight. <laughs> How tighty tight. <laughs> How tighty tight. Tight. Is that a 14 as well? No. 17. Probably. 19. 19. Now you got to that point, yes. can you see where the hole is and does it line up with one of the castellations? Okay. That's a castled nut. Okay, yeah, I can see a hole. You can see a hole? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just check yes, the tightness course. please? Okay, now does it line up? Yeah, still. Still lines up. Okay. Yeah. Right. So but you really have to put some, some power on it. Okay. okay. Right. What we need is this to be straight again. Okay. Uh, well, we've got. Where's your pliers? You can do. It's easier if you have a, a vice. No, Victoria, not that kind of vice. I've got lots of vices. <laughs> but not when I'm working. Ow. <laughs> My only vice we could, we, I was going to say, we could do that one again, actually. Yeah. So it was nearly a joke that was wasted. Okay. Cool. Right. So that goes back through. Back through the hole. We give them a, a little tickle. Okay, okay. yeah, so. To there. And then, and then you bend. One back. One back. And the other one up. That way. And it's in. That's okay. it. Cool. That's all yeah. it is. Okay. Magic. So, so why are we doing this? It's just to clean it off. Just to clean all the, 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 the accumulated rust and stuff that's uh, on the end of the stub axle. So that when the bearing goes on, then it's nice and smooth. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you can lift that one on. Yeah. Now you tell me. <laughs> right. If you if you you're looking at it from the back. Yeah. Okay. So you're looking at it from the back. Okay. okay. You look at it from the middle. Okay. And you can see it. No. Yeah. yeah. From the middle, you can see whether it's going on straight or not. Okay. okay. Right. Because you're pushing you're pushing the the bearing. Yeah. Okay, onto the shaft. Okay. There's no clearance between it, so it has to go on perfectly straight all the way to the end. Okay. Yeah? So. No, I can't even see anything. Can you wiggle it? You can wiggle it. <laughs> I can hear you laughing. <laughs> Come on. How 
How do you see if we put some force behind it? Shouldn't have to. Aha. Oh. Yeah? Just lift it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So right. Good. So that's that. Okay. You hold it now. Yes. Alright. So. Now we put the bearing in. Okay. Okay. And we're going to reuse the uh, the bearing in this case. Okay. And I'm going to lift it a little bit. Okay. And the bearing should just push on straight in. Straight in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then. You have a spacer. Yeah. Okay. Now the spacer is keyed and that okay. lines up with the one that's on there. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Then we have a nut. Okay, so this is going to turn. And that has to turn clockwise. <laughs> you have a special tool, why don't you use it? Okay. Uh, what we're gonna do yes. now, alright, because this is this is for the, the, the uh, basically the, the how tight or how loose the bearing mm -hmm. is. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that nut isn't tight, mm -hmm. Okay, we'll then, the, then the, the whole of the hub will be loose. Okay? If it's too tight, mm -hmm. then you put undue pressure on the bearings, mm -hmm. okay, and they will eventually fail. Yeah. Okay? So, how do I explain this? Okay. What I'm going to do. Tighten it until it stops. Mm -hmm. Just have a settle the bearing again, mm -hmm. see if it can go a bit more. Won't. So. Then back a little bit. Feel it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's smooth. It's very, very smooth. Yeah. There is no play on it. So. Maybe you're fixed. In effect, what you do is you tighten it as far as you can go, take it back a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? Feel it, mm -hmm. and then just make sure that it is tight. If you remember when we took it off this morning, you could undo it with yes. your fingers. Okay. That was too loose. Yeah. Okay. okay. But you get, you, you feel. Yeah, you get to feel how much resistance there is. And you need the bearings to be pushed up against the hub assembly, okay? But then you can feel... That's really nice and smooth. Okay. That's all the grease you can hear, huh? Yeah, that's, the, the, that's what you hear. The so. Cool. Yeah? Okay. That's it. Now, you then have the retainer. Okay. okay. So now, one the, uh, one yeah. Before. So, okay. And this needs to go on there. Now, it this looks, is. It looks bent. Yeah, because it was. Mm -hmm. That was retaining this side of the nut before. Okay. All right. And this one was pointing this way, mm -hmm. retaining the other nut that we're going to put on. Okay. okay. Now. So it's, meant, it's meant to be skewed like that. Yeah. But now, mm -hmm. this won't fit because this is like that. Okay. okay. So what we have to do is okay, clean it off first. Okay. I can either use a new mm -hmm. locking tab or 
we can reuse. Yeah, we can reuse it. Okay, we're gonna reuse it. Put it back on. Yes. Okay. In the same you look. Group, yeah. Right. So, so you got that matches yeah. with that one. Yeah. And if you look just above, you can yeah. see that that's that's the edge of the nut. Okay. And we need to fold over one side of this onto that one okay. to retain it. Yeah. Okay. And then we put the other nut on, and then fold the other side upwards okay. to retain that one. Okay. So the easiest thing to do is put that onto there. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. We get the other nut. Gee. It does make it easier putting it on. Yeah. <laughs> you asked the question earlier on, can you use a chisel and hammer to get it off? If you don't have the special uh, mm -hmm. pub nut And if you look here, you can see the telltale marks that somebody used a hammer and chisel the last time to take it off. There's two little marks there, and I thought there was another one. Mm. Yeah, another yeah. one there. Okay. So, so yes, you can. So, so, we'll the tool and so what we do is we'll just nip that up, okay. being careful that we don't. If we keep over, if we over tighten it, we'll start to turn the one at the back. So all okay. we want to do is just nip it up for the moment, okay. so you can get somewhere sort of. In, Semblance. Yeah, then you can see the other one starting to turn. Okay. Then, very, very gently, we'll just tap him down. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You see? Okay. And how'd you get the other one up? Okay. So, we can tighten this one now. There. Okay. And either with a chisel or with a long screwdriver, what you can do is use uh, the it. hub as a lever and lever it up. A bit okay. there. You ready? Okay. That's him on there. Cool. That's it. Champion. Yeah. Put the paper gasket onto the flange. Right flange okay. back on. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. So it has to be. Well, this you can turn any way you want, oh, so it doesn't okay. make any difference to me. It's just that you have to get the holes to line up. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Ah, now. That's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How did you get it? <laughs> However, yes. what just happened? Is that push back? Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to hold this while it. Right, hold well, a minute. Little tip for you. Yes. Okay. If you push the drive flange on, okay. it will push the whole of the axle backwards. Okay. Right? And you need to hold the axle. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of these. Mm -hmm. Oh right, the little handle. Should, if you've got the right one. Okay. And hold it in place while you put the other bolts in here. Okay. Yeah? So it's okay, okay I don't need to take it out again. So. Is that going in? Is that going right there? Yeah. yeah. And this one. Is going in. So I can okay. take this one out? No. Not yet. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, lovely boy. <laughs> How far so in the... Uh, all the way. These two shims go on here. Okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. And we have our... Oh, very annoying yes, circlip. I remember that. 
And the trick is to put the circlip on first time. That on there, that on there. And then we go. Hey. Like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Turn them around. Mm -hmm. You can make sure mm -hmm. that the ends of the circlip are mm -hmm. in the groove. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that it's definitely in. Okay. Turn it all the way around. So how, how did you get it to fit in? It's just luck, or? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's luck based on yes, about experience. thirty years of being very lucky doing it. The more you practice, the luckier you get. Yes. <laughs> So, so, so when you put it in, you find a groove and then... So you, you, have, a, you have the circlip open, yes. yeah, you put it over, yeah. and when you get to the point of the groove, yeah. which is onto there, yeah. okay. you let go. This one, mm -hmm. we can now take out. Because okay. you, you've got to fit the clip in before you take that so, out. Yeah, because that, you, that gives you your tension. Yeah. Wind him in. Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. Give me a second. You put that on the end of the torque wrench. And then uh, 70 Newton meters again. That's the same again. So, okay. <clears throat> well, how do you stop everything from uh, turning your head and spin it? Yes. So, we're going to do 70 again. Alright, so, so 70 newton meters, okay, which is there, which is around about the 50 mark on. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So. This baby. Now we can put the caliper back on. Right. What we need to do, we have to undo the top two bolts. Yes. Yeah. Is that also 17? Uh, yeah, that's the 17. Mm -hmm. What we will do is do it very, very carefully. So, because I don't want any of this now to drop. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, right. Which way is it? It's going that way in. There. Okay. Right. Have you got the yeah. caliper? Right. I need that and that over there now, but my fingers are in the way at the moment. Okay, cool. Okay, right. Must it be all the way down? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just keeping a little bit of pressure upwards mm -hmm. on the swivel at the moment until I can get the bolts back in. Okay. So that one there, Put him back in there, and he in in. Ooh, he's, he's going in. It's more by feel than <laughs> sight. <laughs> so, okay. bottom one will be in place. So because otherwise yeah. you're trying to get into two places. Rain yes. You can tighten those ones up, the carpers. I don't know if anybody can see anything. I'm going for ten. Bit more. Yeah. Okay. And the other one. 
Nein. Nein. Ten. Test drive. 